We are back inside City Hall, and as we approach the September 9th state primaries, we've been hosting a series of debates for state senate and assembly seats around the city. Tonight, we're looking at the Democratic contest for the 52nd Assembly District that includes a wide swatch of Brownstone, Brooklyn, including parts of Brooklyn Heights, Cobble Hill, Park Slope, downtown Brooklyn, and Gowanus. It's currently represented by Joan Millman, who is not seeking re-election. Joining me for tonight's debate are candidates Joanne Simon, Doug Biviano, and Pete Sikora. And you guys told me, I didn't even realize, this is the first debate that you've had. I thought the yes. neighborhood groups would yeah. have gotten to you guys by now, but right. um, w welcome and I'm glad that welcome. you're here. Um, as we get started, I want to clear up something with you, Doug Viviano, because there was all of this stuff about whether or not you should be invited and so forth. Um, up until, I guess today, you had filed no activity reports with the, uh, the State Board of Elections, and we weren't going to include you for that reason, but you're saying now that you've now spent um, something uh, under $1,000 and I'm wondering, when did the campaign start for you? It started a couple of weeks into petitioning. Uh, it was a late campaign, but that's not important. Uh, I find it curious uh, that the real abuse in this district. You're not going to read that statement. You should put that away. Um, folks, well, we're, we're going okay. to start by talking um, about the, uh, the, the no, closing of the out. Island it was College pointed Hospital. out in the Daily News today that the working Doug, families Doug, you're not going to do this. I'll turn off the mic, and I'll send you home. Don't do that. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> Just don't do that. Um, the closing okay. of Long Island Co College Hospital is, a, is a, a key issue in this district. It's an accomplished fact. There doesn't seem to be any scenario, realistically, in which a full-service hospital of the kind that was there is going to reopen anytime soon. Um, what is the path forward for the community, and what would you do as a member of the Assembly? Let's, let's start with you, Pete. Sure. Well, I founded Parents for Litch uh, to fight to save the hospital and protect the services that we need in the community. Um, so uh, lots of folks joined in on that. Um, Litch is an uh, ongoing issue in the district. We have to make sure that it doesn't turn into a gig gigantic luxury condo tower, which would raise housing prices in the area and mar the neighborhood. Um, we have to also preserve the services that we need for emergency care and acute care and clinics. Um, it's possible that uh, that, that process uh, produces some affordable housing, that would be a plus, but we have to keep it inside the envelope of the buildings that exist today. And, and so as a member of Assembly, would you be introducing legislation? What, what, would, your, what would your specific role be? Litch uh, should never have been closed. Uh, we should have a fully functioning hospital there. It didn't have to close. The governor was wrong to push to close it. Um, it was sold for real estate. Um, as an assembly member, I would be very, very involved in health care policy to push primary care in the areas and make sure that further hospitals aren't closed. Mm -hmm. Legislatively, we need a solution overall. And then in Brooklyn, we've got some serious, serious problems. Okay, Joanne Simon. Yes. Well, I was involved on the ground at Litch from uh, long before the, the uh, cameras arrived, uh, including many years ago, a couple of years before that, when uh, Continuum was seeking to close the maternity and pediatrics departments, which would have closed the hospital. Uh, so we worked at that point. I worked very closely with the elected officials uh, and uh, did SUNY Downstate uh, did come into uh, uh, ownership, which turned out to not be a match made in heaven. But uh, the community got together. The community was there early on. The community was there long. Uh, they're still there uh, fighting to maintain services there and to keep the development that is there um, at a minimum. We know that there are like 19 buildings in the Litch campus, and we know that there will be housing there. What we need to do is make sure that there's an appropriate mix and that there is planning so that this doesn't just become uh, towers without any services or any infrastructure. What I've already proposed is that one of my first bills in Albany would be the Health Care Information Management Act, which would require the Department of Health to collect data on things such as how long it takes from 911 to getting to the ER, uh, track pulmonary and cardiac uh, deaths by uh, uh, borough, by, by neighborhood, uh, and a number of other features like, such as that. Because what we're doing right now, if you look at the Fortis proposal, they have a number of subspecialties that they believe this urgent care unit will um, uh, address. The fact is that nobody knows how they came up with that list. It seems to be political conjecture. What we need is hard data, and we need the health department to collect that data mm -hmm. and then report that, because we can't assess the needs of the community, mm -hmm. either our community or any other community, in terms of health care unless we're collecting the appropriate data and reporting it to the legislature. Okay. So, Doug, if you're your assemblyman uh, come January, what, uh, what to be done about, about the whole Litch issue? Well, I think, first of all, we have to talk about what's causing the problem with Litch. Uh, 
how the voters have lost control over the governing decisions in their own neighborhoods, like the closing of Long Island College Hospital, like the tearing down of libraries for luxury, luxury housing, like condos in the park. And uh, you know, this control of our neighborhoods has been taken away from us by a private Tammany Hall that is not interested in serving the public, uh, but instead uh, tearing down our vital uh, in uh, infra uh, institutions uh, that save our lives, uh, that um, educate us, and, and give us enjoyment. But Litch in particular, there was a lot of deception about it. Uh, Mayor de Blasio used that as a campaign prop with my opponent, Peter Sikora, uh, to get elected. Uh, the lobbyist uh, uh, consultant, Berlin Rosen, who represents Peter Sikora, uh, did an illegal mailing uh, with, uh, for de Blasio's PAC, Citizens United type PAC, campaign for One New York, um, it, stating that the protection that the community was going to get the, for emergency care with the proposed emergency room uh, was adequate. Doctors in the community immediately disputed it, immediately disputed it. Okay, so so what, we're, we're gonna we'll, we'll go further into that, and I'll have to give them a chance to respond. But what what would be your your plan? But they coordinated with a PAC. I want to make it clear: uh, one from one New York, Berlin Rosen, coordinated with Peter uh, Sikora's campaign illegally during the campaign season uh, to do the mailer, the dark money layer uh, got mailing. It. Got you got it. that? Yeah. That needs to be investigated. Okay, so. Again, you're, if you're in the assembly in January, what, what would you do to sort of uh, deal with the health needs of the community? Well, first we have to, exp we, we have to get uh, the lobbyists and the consultants out of our community business. We have to take control back. We have to take the elections back from the special interests. We have to expose what's going on. We have to expose uh, that Carl McCall uh, and, uh, and SUNY are using lawyers from the machine, uh, the Democratic machine, uh, in taking down a hospital, in closing a hospital. Okay, let me give, give Peter so a chance to, to, expose to, that. to respond. Um, so uh, those are some pretty wild accusations that are not true. Um, I have a 20-year record of working as an advocate starting at NYPIRG. I caught the activist bug in college. Uh, my proudest accomplishment was passage of the Childhood Lead Poisoning Prevention Act, which was a very hard fight with real estate. Um, I don't take any real estate donations. I went to work for Consumers Union. Now I work for a progressive labor union. Uh, my campaign is completely above board. Uh, we're very proud of the substantive message that we're providing. Well, let, let me ask you in, in, in a different fashion. I mean, there, there is a, a, a sense that um, both when the mayor and you, you're one of the people who got arrested, I think, mm -hmm. uh, to try oh, yeah, to stop yeah. the closure yeah. of Litch, was that um, the, the, the political symbolism didn't track with what subsequently happened, and now the hospital is closed. So, you know, I think the mayor deserves actual enormous credit here uh, for fighting for the hospital. Um, I think he's That's been brilliant. unfairly maligned. Um, he stood up uh, in that fight, so I was proud to stand with him. Um, we organized rallies uh, and Parents for Litch, three of them, uh, with uh, the now mayor, then candidate Bill de Blasio. Um, we did a lot of petitioning, a lot of lobbying, a lot of work behind the scenes to try and save the hospital. But he was engaged on the legal level and behind the scenes both before and after the election. Um, the governor and SUNY actually deserve uh, the blame here for closing the hospital. This is a state system. Mm -hmm. It's not a city system. It's a state system. So I, I want to get jo in, Joanne in on this um, in, in, in a very specific question. We've had about a minute mm -hmm. till the break. Um, mm -hmm. The, the way that the bid process went was really quite complicated. The first bidder had to drop out. The second one came in. Uh, it looked like what had been promised or what, um, what people got points for in yes. order to win the bid was in the end either not economically feasible or perhaps was, uh, you know, I think lawsuits are now flying over how the bid process went. From your, your point of view, what, what did you see go wrong there? I think that uh, what went wrong is that they didn't give enough time to the second uh, entity mm -hmm. that uh, was the second choice of the community. There clearly are some troubling signals with regard to how people scored those proposals, um, and, uh, and, and uh, particularly because health care was supposed to be the most heavily weighted of the categories. And in at least one case, it got no weight whatsoever. And that is the Fordist proposal. Mm -hmm. 
And that is exactly what we didn't want. That's what everybody who organized around this, whether it was uh, the candidate de Blasio, whether it was other candidates, whether it was the elected officials, me as the Democratic district leader and a community leader, bringing together all of the neighborhood organizations. This was a huge issue, and it was uh, participated in by a vast number of people. Their overwhelming single most important goal was health care, was mm -hmm. to have a full service hospital at Litch, which by the way is on high ground, which is, makes it valuable for real estate. It also makes it safe and sustainable. Okay, we are going to take a short break now. We'll be back with this debate in just a minute. Also tonight, folks, is Governor Cuomo's primary challenger's effort teach out picking up any traction among Democrats. We're gonna talk it over with the four members of our Monday Consultants Corner. Stay with us. Welcome back to Inside City Hall, where we are holding a debate for the 52nd State Assembly District in Brooklyn with Democratic candidates Joanne Simon, Doug Viviano, and Pete Sikora. And um, we allow you each to ask one of your uh, colleagues here at the table a, a question and, and get a response. We'll start with you, Joanne. Pete. Joanne. You are running on a platform of fixing Albany and cleaning up corruption in Albany and campaign finance. Please explain to the voters how it is that you are exploiting every campaign finance loophole and failing to disclose your expenses and those of independent expenditures. Uh, well, uh, everything's disclosed. Uh, state law governs how disclosures are done. Uh, so I don't really know what you're referring to. How about any expenses for anything and any expenses that have been incurred on your behalf, you haven't disclosed those expenses. Uh, and in fact, you gave $22,960 to the Working Families Party and didn't disclose what it was for, nor did they disclose what they were using it for. Um, well, well, well uh, it's actually very simple. I'm very proud of mm -hmm. the Working Families Party's support as well as the support of lots of organizations and progressive elected officials like Brad Lanner, Daniel Squadron, Steve Levin. Um, parties report uh, their expenditures when the bill is paid. Uh, so there's a disclosure deadline coming up Friday. That's under state law governed. That's the proper moment for disclosure. So you're not uh, paying so that's it when until then. So on, on, on <laughs> Friday, what you're saying is uh, on Friday we'll see uh, what the disclosures are. I, yeah. I did look at the disclosures. That's and there right. are just big checks written to you know Working yeah. Families Party or two-year-old uh, you know, firm so, Berlin so Rosen, but it's not clear what it was used for. There's a there's a this is governed by state law and the state board of elections. So the proper time to disclose it is on Friday. The, it'll show the expenses that the Working Families Party has incurred. I've instructed them to disclose everything uh, right from the beginning and again based on uh, Fair enough. this. Yeah. Uh, Doug. Again, the question goes to uh, Pete. Um, Pete, your campaign consultant, Berlin Rosen, uh, illegally coordinated with the mayor's One New York PAC in the Lich Dark Money mailing. That violates federal election law coordinating with your campaign. Doctors in the community immediately disputed that uh, in the letter uh, there would be adequately, adequate emergency health care uh, with the proposed ER room. Uh, are you going to fire your, your consultant, Berlin Rosen, and are you going to go to the uh, U.S. Attorney General with me and demand that One New York be investigated about this violation? Uh, no. Um, so uh, those are, again, really wild, unsupported allegations that you're They're making. They're supported. Uh, I don't know by what. Um, that's an assertion you're making. Um, Berlin Rosen represents you, a candidate, no, let him, let him, okay. let him yeah. and a PAC, uh, and they coordinate let, let, the mailing in election season. Uh, Berlin Rosen also represents Greenpeace, the Coalition for the Homeless, uh, Liz Forest Kruger, City and uh, several other really reputable independent entities. Um, I'm proud to have them as my campaign consultants. They design the mail. Uh, I mean, so, so several other groups um, that right, your campaign is also not supposed to coordinate with. So are you saying no coordination with any of these outside groups? Uh, there's no coordination with outside organizations that aren't work. Uh, we have several organizations that are supporting my campaign. Mm -hmm. We're coordinating with those organizations, for example, the League of Conservation Voters, Tenants PAC, mm -hmm. the New York State AFL-CIO. Um, we're working very closely together, actually, on my campaign. I'm very proud uh, of their support. Um, we're not doing anything uh, that isn't disclosed. Uh, Berlin Rosen is completely above board. The same with, with my campaign. Okay. Yeah. Uh, your, your turn to ask a question. 
Uh, so um, I guess I would ask uh, Joanna a, a question. Um, you know, my, my, uh, I understand that politics ain't beanbag. You know, that's the saying. Um, my proudest accomplishment was passage of the Childhood Lead Poisoning Prevention mm -hmm. Act through the City Council. Um, that saved thousands of kids from brain damage and lead poisoning. Um, and so I was really dismayed uh, when you sent a robocall to the whole district uh, questioning that. Um, Gotham Gazette said that that claim was dubious and that um, I was correctly at the forefront of the, of the campaign. So I'm wondering if given that fact check you'd be willing to uh, retract your claim. No, because we did a fact check in the first place that indicated that that was not the case. You indicated that you spearheaded the co coalition for NYPIRG. Yeah. And in fact, NYPIRG doesn't even claim to have spearheaded the coalition. What we were talking about is exaggeration. And we believe that your claims were exaggerated. And in fact, people who have worked are working with me are people who won the original lead paint case and essentially wrote the statute. So uh, I, I understand that you're, you're dismayed by it, but I stand by our, um, our analysis. We've, we've got four minutes left, which yes. is um, plenty of time to talk about Brooklyn Bridge Park, right? Great. A, a little matter affecting the district. <laughs> um, it's an unusual entity in that it's, um, it's based on these converted docks. It's run by a development corporation that uses rent from housing in the park, some of it luxury housing, to pay for upgrades to perhaps also subsidize some affordable housing. There's a big debate on how the process is going. Um, I'd like each of you to name a major part of the plan that you like and a part of the plan that you would, as a member of assembly, want to change. We can start with you. Uh, well, the, the park is just fantastic. The diversity, it's incredibly, uh, it's an incredible success. So um, we go there all the time, me and my daughter. Um, I would like to see the area for the kids expanded. Um, it's like a kid paradise right now on, on, on Pier 6. Um, so we need that space used for that kind of a purpose, not uh, new condo development. Now, there's a question of whether there's additional revenue needed to support the park's ongoing maintenance. That's an open question. The Brooklyn Bridge Park Corporation has made that case, but on effect, not effectively. We don't know whether that money is needed. Revenues have come in above estimates so far. So if we do need that revenue, and that's a big if, what I would propose is, at, is attaching capital spending to an upcoming Environmental Quality Bond Act. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a good way to take a pause now, and then within three years, see if we need to do that or not. To, re to, to, to redo the peers. That's one of the issues there. Okay, Joanne. What part that I like the most? Um, I love that big hill overlooking uh, from on Pier 1. Uh, it's one of the first parts of the park that went in, and there is it's just a beautifully shaped area with uh, beautiful plantings all around it and uh, a great uh, scenic view uh, of our uh, wonderful waterfront. Uh, I personally... I uh, have concerns about the housing in the park and its use to subsidize uh, uh, the development. I am very concerned about the condition of the piers. I think that uh, we know that uh, piers take an inordinate amount of maintenance and we need to address that effectively. I also proposed early on a ferry terminal at Pier 6. And as much as I love the, the playground and the kids' playground is wonderful, mm -hmm. it didn't have to be on a pier, mm -hmm. for example. We have a deep water pier there. We could have used that for a ferry terminal. It would have been green transportation. It would have been transportation to this very transportation-starved site. Mm -hmm. um, and it would have it led to a lot of economic development, and we wouldn't have had this issue about housing in the park. If this park is so successful, it's very clear we need more park space, not less. Mm -hmm. I believe that we can look south to Pier 7 and look at maybe doing a ferry terminal. We know we can do it there. That's where the, the big ships come in during Fleet Week. Uh, we could develop that and uh, make a big difference there. Okay, thank you. Doug. Hey, the, I love the park. Uh, the problem is when I go with my family, we use it all the time. Uh, there's no space to run around. We can't get on the fields. We get kicked off for the leagues. Uh, but the, again, the problem with the park and the condos in the park is that the community is not being listened to. They're the voters are not being respected. Uh, I think that the affordable housing question proves uh, that the funding, uh, to, you know, that we needed the condos to be a lie. But again, the real issue is the special interests who are driving our elections uh, want those condos in the park. That's the bottom line. Uh, and in order to stop that, what we have to do is we have to stop funding the tax breaks for all the other development. 157 Manhattan with a $35 million tax break uh, is one example of that. Uh, we have to stop uh, elected officials 
giving these tax breaks to these special interests, and then we could use the money to fund our parks, to fund our hospitals, to stop overcrowding in schools. These, re these issues are interconnected. Uh, uh, lobbyists like Berlin Rosen, who represents Peter Sikora, uh, are driving also the library being torn down. Uh, Berlin Rosen represents Forest City Ratner. Oh, hold on, let me finish my point. No, I'm not going to let you finish because, your point. Because no, people you have answered, to understand I, what's destroying question, our communities. Out of time for this Berlin debate. Rosen so, represents um, Forest City Ratner and Pete Sikora. They want, the, thank library. Thank they want the library. Pete Sikora. They want the library. Thanks for, for uh, joining us. The, uh, they the want Democratic the primary is on September 9th. We're going to take a short break now, and straight ahead, the four members of our Monday Consultants Corner will weigh in on Governor Cuomo's primary challengers and his campaign strategy so far. Stay with us. Thank you.